and I, and I want to discuss it. So Philip Rivers is currently playing without Keenan Allen, Danny Woodhead, and Antonio Gates, but he's still on pace for 4,404 yards, 32 TDs, and only four interceptions this season. The Chargers, meanwhile, they're on pace to go 4-12, and 12, putting up big numbers, but no playoffs. That's been pretty much the story of Rivers' career. That's why his former teammate, LaDainian Tomlinson, LT telling NFL Network he thinks the Chargers are in rebuilding mode and should consider trading him. Rivers turns 35 in December. So if the Chargers were to trade Rivers, what team should be first in line, Will? The Denver Broncos, the team we just got done talking about. And to me, this is a no-brainer for the Broncos. They offer, here's the hypothetical I offer you, they give the Chargers their choice of Trevor Simeon or Paxton Lynch and a second-round pick. I think that's the market set by the Sam Bradford trade. They got Sam Bradford for a first and a fourth. You get one of these quarterbacks that Denver took, not Simeon in the first round, but perhaps he's proven himself the equivalent of Lynch at this point, who's a first-round quarterback, plus a second because Rivers is better than Bradford. And this is the deal. Denver's trading from strength. They're trading from surplus. They don't need two prospects. Both guys can't be on the field. In fact, they diminish each other's value. You got to get rid of them while they have their highest potential value, which is now. Couple that with your window. In the NFL, you've got a three to four year window. And you cannot sell me on the fact that Phillip Rivers right now in that three to four year window exponentially increases the Broncos ability to win the Super Bowl. Right, which is why they should have done this in the offseason. Absolutely right, Philip Rivers on the Broncos. In fact, last year we were talking about this on Sports Nation. Where, you know, should they trade Philip Rivers? Because, and by the way, mainly for Philip Rivers' sake, he's a great quarterback who is stuck in a situation where he's just never going to win a Super Bowl there. It doesn't seem like it. Although in the NFL, every time you think that, you know, something, suddenly a team makes a run. But San Diego has not seemed to be serious about putting a Super Bowl team around him. And when you think about Philip Rivers on the Broncos, as though they could get, I mean, that is such a great fit. But we're in the middle of a season. So what you're talking about, three to four year window, the assumption is Rivers will play well till he's 40. He might. Because, but he's 34 right, now, so 38. 30, uh, no, he's 36 now. Oh, how, Rivers? How old is, thir, how old is Philip Rivers, Rivers right now? Rivers is going to be 35 in December. Okay, so 34. You're real. Okay, so yeah, he might have a three or four year window or maybe even a little longer. The point is the Broncos are defending a Super Bowl championship. This guy doesn't know the offense, hasn't played there, and now you're bringing him in half or the third of the way through the season where they're undefeated. The time to do this was the off season. Now, I don't know if you pull the trigger now all the way while well, the season's underway or maybe this upcoming off season. I don't know you do it now. Stephen, now your thoughts? You know what? I ignored Will from the moment that he said the Denver Broncos was the team that the Phil that Philip Rivers needed to end up with. Because <laughs> if you're the Broncos, you're one of three undefeated teams left in the National Football League. You've got the premier defense, which, by the way, led you to a Super Bowl title. You're the reigning defending Super Bowl champions. The parts around you in your new quarterback, meaning Emmanuel Sanders, Demarius Thomas, C.J. Anderson, etc., uh, along with the, uh, along with at least a decent offensive line, there's simply no excuse to change anything. Trevor Simeon has been playing. Certainly, he's looked better than Peyton Manning looked last year. Paxton Lynch even came in there and did a little something, something. And so when you look at it from that perspective, why even bother? At the end of the day, here's what it comes down to. You can say what you want, you can believe what you want, or whatever the case may be. If Phillip Rivers was going to go anywhere, Talk to me about the Buffalo Bills, or to a lesser degree, actually to more of a degree, because I like Tyrod Taylor. Talk to me about the New York Jets. Talk to me about Philip Rivers being in a New York Jets uniform. The Rams. Having Rams. Brandon Marshall to throw the football to. I mean, I, I, I look at, I look, I'm, sorry, I'm sorry, I'm saying, I'm, th I'm thinking Philip Rivers to San Diego. You could talk about the Rams. That would be another option. But I definitely think the New York Jets, if you want to legitimately compete for a Super Bowl with their ability to get at the passer, if you've got a quarterback experienced enough to refrain from making mistakes and get receivers the ball and make the offense more prolific, it might not put as much pressure on the defense and they could be formidable. And we like can see it. where it goes. Like from there. Like that's, that's, where, yeah. that, that's where I would yeah, think about the it. Yeah, but the reason it happens, it. the reason it happens for the Broncos is because they're the ones to equip to answer both of your questions. I appreciate you ignored me because then you missed all of the wonderful arguments I did to back up my, that I forwarded to back up my, my position. It's this. Max, here's why you make the trade now. Because the Chargers would be more willing to do it now, seeing that they're in rebuilding mode. In the offseason, they didn't have that reality. They didn't know that reality. Now they do. So the Chargers they know are that reality in this upcoming Perhaps season? going forward. Right. But also on the Broncos' side, the reason to do it now is because what's the... How is this a lose proposition for the Broncos? If Phillip Rivers can't come in and learn the, the offense, 
Well, you've still got Trevor Simeon or Paxton Lynch, whichever quarterback wasn't traded away. So you could continue theoretically this continuity with the upside of, oh, a top 10 quarterback in the NFL, an all-time top eight quarterback career-wise in the numbers. You have that potential icing, you take because that. Because I think everything you're suggesting can be accomplished in this offseason where he has the whole preseason to prepare. And also, to, to Stephen A's point, I don't know if, if the Broncos really need now. I'm just I, not I willing to, I'm He not makes them better. Philip Rivers would make the Broncos I'm better. With, I'm That's with the end of that argument. He, does, he makes them better. They're 4 0. Oh. That's the They oh, don't come need on. to make a change. They've yeah. got two guys to, that can be their potential. Good enough. Well, 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 in other words, good Jets, enough is not they an need argument. Someone. Good enough is not they an argument. They could win a Super Bowl. The simple Bowl. question is this Is Philip Rivers better than Trevor Simmons? Yes. And I think we know the answer is yes. So does that make the Broncos better? Yes. But the question also is at this point in the season, is Philip Rivers better than anyone they got? Yes, he's better than most quarterbacks I've ever seen, really. He's an excellent quarterback. But are they good enough right now without him? Because it's, it's not the offseason, middle of the season. There are other factors to consider. I think also the answer is yes. The Broncos could easily repeat this year. And, and getting Rivers doesn't mean necessarily that they have a better chance this season. All right, I'm, I'm rolling with the doctor in this one. But I, I'm so proud Dr. of you guys. Smith. We got through four topics, essentially. It's my like, fault. That's I the came first in. I was, I was shooting though. from the hip. I had a little passion. I think passion. in, like, first take history, it's great. We touched on a lot of things. Really proud. Really Next week, we'll, we'll argue about Charlie Strong. Good. I'm looking forward to that. We'll stay and put. The NFL coming down hard on Antonio Brown for his touchdown celebrations. Someone at the desk has a problem with it. We'll discuss. Do you have a problem with this? I think the bow and arrow is silly. I mean, I don't think it was meant as a violent situation. But, you know, I, I, I don't have a problem with finding a player, including Antonio Brown, for twerking or doing whatever you want to call it. Popping it. You know, I mean, it is, it is sexually it is suggestive and lewd. And if you're packaging family entertainment, I get it. Find him, fine. Here's what I have a problem with. How does what a guy does, uh, how, how he behaves after the fact, the play on the field is over. Affect things like field position. That is absurd. It's one thing to, to enforce a code of behavior uh, because you want a family product. Very violent product, by the way. But oh, and, and they sell alcohol during the commercials. But OK, fine. It's for kids, right? Fine. It's one thing to say, we're going to fine you if you behave that way. That's OK. But to say that somehow to insist that that behavior is somehow uh, conflated with the actual competition on the field is asinine. I've never understood it, and 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 uh, I'm totally against it. So forget the fine. I'm upset by the fact that it cost you field position because you celebrated. Stephen A. Go ahead, Will. Go ahead, Will. Well, um, I guess I disagree with Max. I don't have a problem with the punishment for the act. I have a problem with the application of the rule, which I can't parse, I can't figure out. It's like most things in the NFL these days. And to me, this is actually one of the biggest problems the NFL faces, is we don't know what we're watching, apparently. We can't trust our eyes. We can't see reality because there's this alternate reality, a shadow reality, that is the NFL rule book. And to know what a catch is, or a fumble, or who recovered a fumble, or what's too much celebration, you got to sort of consult the oracles and they throw chicken bones and look into the instant replay booth and they come out with some arbitrary decision that's never consistent and that's a problem for the nfl because it convinces us that it it, it, it allows us to consider that it's unfair that it's rigged that it allows us to go wait why is that not a catch it was a catch in the game last week it was a catch earlier in the game i don't understand what's going on here that's the biggest problem and so this arbitrary enforcement, because we don't know what's violent, what's sexually subjective, what the definition of a catch is, that's a real problem for the NFL. And honestly, I'll be, I don't know how they nail it down. I mean, how do you technically nail down what's sexually suggestive? I think both of those were sexually suggestive. I do have to say okay, that. But I where's think the both line? of those were. I'm just, I'm just saying. You can't trust the eyes point really quickly is a very good point, because I also have a beef there. But it's not so much in terms of the application of the rules. It's like, your team scores. Uh, but am I allowed to be happy? Oh, they're reviewing the scoring play. I don't know. Did it count? Did it not count? You can't ever feel the emotion in the moment that you can be uh, 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 confident is a permanent emotion, that you're allowed to feel that way, because they apply all these rules in ways that, that are like Byzantine and hard to understand. Stephen A. Y'all are making it more convoluted than it really needs to be. Fact of the matter is simple. NFL should have a rule instituted. Nothing sexually suggestive. That's it. Period. 
If it's not sexually suggest suggestive, because obviously kids are watching, what's the problem? Why is, why is Josh Norman being fined? I understand the Antonio Brown fine. Do I think it deserved to be for $25,000? No. But I understand the fine because you don't want something sexually suggestive. But how in God's name is Josh Norman getting a fine for that? For what? It falls under you know, violence. Especially, and, 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 here's, and but here's, here's the, here is the, um, the hypocrisy in it all. Look at the Redskins. Look at, you know, you know you, you got the whole Native American issue, which Max has spoken eloquently about on many, many occasions, okay? And, you know, you think about the bow and arrow and all of this other stuff. He being a member of the Washington Redskins, that may very well have been the reason that he did it. I don't see them looking to change the name. I don't see them looking to do anything about that. Why would you sit up there and penalize him for something that harmless? And that's just one of the examples. There are many others where the NFL has definitely been a bit excessive. I mean, you're controlling the shoes folks wear, the color socks they wear, and stuff like that. I mean, the list just goes on and on and on. It doesn't stop, and that's why I applaud and completely appreciate Mike Tomlin and where he's coming from, where Mike Tomlin said, we need you to be a bit more specific as to what warrants a fine, as opposed to something being so arbitrary and being implemented, you know, on an arbitrary basis where you can't define exactly what the problem is until you are confronted by it. And if you got a problem with somebody, how about giving them a warning first and then make sure and see what happens thereafter, so as Stephen opposed a, to just, you know, deciding to find them. You would, you would pare down the unsportsmanlike conduct penalties in celebration to sexually suggestive. That's what you're saying. You, you'd allow the bow and arrow. Yes. You'd allow the, the flexing yes. and all that. Sure, why not? Yeah, I would allow the flex. You don't want you don't want anything. Uh, you know, you don't want it going on for a minute or two or something like that. But at the same time, if somebody's flexing or whatever, what's the problem? No, no, no. What about a guy in a sport like football? doing that kind of thing? What's that's okay? Well, again, okay, fine, fine. Something sexually suggestive or violent or violent. That's okay, a but here's the problem. So here's the bow problem. I'm with Stephen someone. A. I'm with Stephen A. The way to fix your problems is to pare down your rule book. It's like the federal criminal code. Nobody can get their hands around it, and there's laws that contradict each other. They literally don't know how many things are against the law at the federal level at this point. We don't know what's going on in the NFL. However. Paring it down doesn't solve all your problems because you point out once you say violence is wrong in celebration, okay, throat slash bad, bow and arrow shooting good, where was the line there? I don't see what the bright line is. I agree, by the way. Josh Norman shouldn't be penalized. Carlos Hyde was penalized last night for flexing, literally doing sort of the incredible Hulk flex. I mean, I we've think the answer there's an answer to your this. question. And it's nothing sexual at all, and in terms of the violence, because it's inextricably tied to a very violent sport, right? You got to do it on a case-by-case -case basis, and when they see something they don't like, they can say, okay, he did that. The next time someone does that, that's going to be a fine. I, I think people can be reasonable about yeah. what violent stuff constitutes what. And to Stephen A's point, I think that's the real reason. I don't think it's about the violence with the bow and arrow. I think that the Washington franchise is under some pressure about the name, and they felt that that hit a little too close to home. No question, but the flexing should be allowed. And, and I don't need to see a man twerking, just throwing that they out there. I know. Never I know, sacrifice I know. field position because they celebrated. That's absurd.